Philip Berti is chief strategist at Bank Saracen, which has about $125 billion of assets under management. Very good to see you there. Let me ask you a fundamental question. Are we heading to recession? Well, that's uh, probably the key question that everyone is worried about. And uh, our take on that is that we think uh, with the re recent data releases, the risk has risen substantially. We now think there's a 50% chance that we will be in a recession before the end of the year. What's the major cause? Is it real business fundamentals out there, or is it actually political drift, political incompetence? Where do you put your money on that one? Well, I think it started with uh, political in incompetence in the, in the euro area, not acting fast enough, but uh, being very reactive through the summer. It, uh, also uh, what went on in the U.S. with the debt ceiling debate and basically that led to a loss of confidence among uh, businesses, among consumers and also among investors. And this uh, drop that we've seen now in share prices in all risky assets basically has an, another effect, another negative wealth effect on the consumer and also uh, on, on the businesses. And so we think that this will uh, probably trigger a, a recession quite soon. Okay, Philip, given that turmoil and given the uncertainty and the volatility, where do you put your money? What asset classes are you favoring? What are you running a mile from? Well, I think that's, that's a very difficult question right now. We have a lot of cash in our accounts. Uh, basically, we are underweight equities, we are underweight bonds, we are underweight commodities, we are underweight real estate. So that has never happened in my career, that basically we are underweight everything except for cash, notably in Swiss francs. So the Swiss franc has been strong and that uh, has served as well. Uh, well, as far as industries are concerned, is it the usual defenses that, defensives that really are the only ones that you might even take a sniff at the health care that we insure, is that sort of thing? Well, we have started to reduce the cyclical exposure in portfolios already back in the second quarter in April when we saw that the cyclical momentum is turning down. And uh, we are doing further steps to, to really reduce that. We are on the way to industrials, on the way to consumer discretionary. What we like in the market is, uh, on the one hand, the defensives, uh, which are consumer staples and healthcare for us. We want to own those defensives that we can, we think they can actually grow their earnings also in a very difficult market environment and that they can also pay dividends. And for that matter, the dividends, we also like insurance companies. We think that insurance, the sector as such, has suffered in line with banks, with all financials, but we think that's actually not justified. If we look at the valuation of those companies, if we look at at the earnings that they post for the first half of this year, we think that they uh, should rebound very strongly and that they have very attractive dividend yields. You mentioned the Swiss franc. What about the other haven, gold? Well, gold, uh, if you measure it in Swiss francs, it uh, surprisingly actually has been flat year to date. So you haven't had made a lot of money uh, owning uh, gold from a Swiss uh, franc investor base. But if you are a dollar, uh, UK, uh, euro based investor, it certainly makes sense to hold gold at this point in time. We expect the gold price to, at le to, to reach at least uh, $2,000 uh, uh, per ounce. That's not far away now, but it was far away when we made the forecast a few weeks ago. But we think that the gold has further upside as long as interest rates stay low and we know from the Fed that they will do that on, uh, until 2013 at least so we think it uh, certainly makes sense uh, for most investors maybe except for Swiss investors to hold uh, gold <laughs> as an alternative to cash. Yeah Philip what about emerging markets in these turbulent times and the horrors that we're seeing here in Europe and to a certain extent over in America too are the emerging markets the key or really do you have to have nerves of steel to start investing over there given the volatility as well? Well, I think it's probably the, the, the wrong time to, to, to invest just to today. Clearly, uh, emerging markets, uh, we see it once again. They are very, uh, ver very sensitive to risk aversion, and they have started now to, to come down as well. But that, I think really the devaluation is so attractive. If you look at the emerging markets index, it's now trading again below a P ratio of 10 on based on forward earnings. We think those earnings will be more stable, actually, than those in developed markets. And for that reason, we think it's actually good to be overweight uh, or have a, a, a sensible portion of your portfolio in emerging market assets. And we think that the turnaround in monetary policy that we expect quite soon in the emerging world actually from a tightening stance to more uh, um, an expansionary stance will be very helpful at least on a relative basis and we think that 
On a 12-month horizon, emerging markets have an upside potential of 30%. So a very cautious approach. Philip Becci, I'm really grateful to you. Thanks for joining us on Bloomberg today.